We're gonna have Rick Shaw come up here. I'm gonna play his video first. I got a couple clips here. Um, he's gonna do some special effect demonstrations live that you can see and feel. Whatever. Now that you have my uh, information, feel free to ask questions. Once you get out of here, I'm okay to that with that. Um, various ways to contact me, cards are out on the desk. I'll get into what I do. I'm the guy who's too noxy in movies. I guess I'd say go out, live real good. I promise you'll get beat up real bad. It's not gonna matter if you have a few scars, but it will matter if you didn't live. Sorry, we're closing early today. Last sale. Get the weapons in the safe now. Please leave up peacefully and quietly out the back doors. Stay safe. Cash my office now. Not to property, Tim. Come on, let's go! Go, go, go! Hey! Leave us alone. Back off! You help Jimmy. Jimmy! I said back off! I got him! Hey! Ugh. Come on, come on! Hey! Who are you kidding? You can't shoot us all! You really want to take that chance? You ain't going anywhere! You're fine! Give it to me! Come on, give it to me!
Jimmy. We got him! Don't move! Please! I said don't move! Are you okay, Sophie? I've got him. Go check on Jimmy. Annie, look out! Help! Emily! Don't fight me, girl. Hey, you! Behind the shelter! Help, Emily! Or I'll cut her. Leave her alone. What you see in the last two footages were from a movie that has not been released and still in post. There's still a lot of work, sound, tinting, things of that nature, getting ready for motion picture screen, so you see a little bit jump off the screen, whatever the case may be. My job is a stunt coordinator. I'm also a special effects guy where I blow things up, so the explosion you see is, is what I do as well. Um, the visual effects is something that I must understand as a stunt coordinator. Can everybody hear me back there okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Um, so, how many of you have been on film sets, regardless if it was big, little, Hold your hand up. Okay. Basically, the first thing I will cover on any group is safety. Regardless if you have stunts or not on a, on a movie set, if it's a multi-million dollar set, or you're just getting a sandwich and a Happy Meal to work on that film, you better understand the safety aspect of it because of cameras, lights, wires, uh, the sound equipment. We set up bounce boards to protect, to, to cut the light down. Wind comes up, it can take somebody and hurt them really bad. Um, majority of the accidents that occur are more behind the scene than there are in front of the camera. Uh, crews are running wide open, um, and it, it, it's just a situation you better be prepared to find out when you arrive on set. Who ask? Who's in charge of safety? Ask them. On a SAG film, which is Screen Actors Guild, first AD is in charge of safety. If he does not understand what is going on when I arrive on set, I may dismiss him, have him step aside, but he doesn't understand what I'm doing. So I take over the safety. So the safest place on a movie set when a stunt coordinator is there is probably going to be next to the stunt man or the stunt coordinator. Even though they're the ones jumping off the building, setting themselves on fire, and um, you know, so on and so forth. But we understand the dangers of, of filming. My career started in 1983, and I attended uh, college, got a degree in mechanical engineering. 1989, um, I was inside of a stadium, uh, broke a world record for the highest temperature endured by a human. I was on fire from head to tail, jumped from 100. And, 20 feet, we measured the inside core temp of the suit, and it was over 600 degrees. That was purposely doing it. Now, by accident, that's, that was a record that was held for many years. Fire burns, I've done more than 500 fire burns for various TV shows over the years. Um, I doubled Robert Urick, for those who remember. Uh, doubled the guys you've seen on here, you know, uh, Brian Bosworth, you know, so I've uh, worked with some actors over the years that, you know, I'm more concentrated <coughs> on what I do and my safety aspect. I don't run to the talent to get pictures taken with them. You know, that's, that's somebody else's job to go do that. My job is to protect them and make sure that they're in a safe state. So what we're going to do is I'm kind of going to cover a few things. Uh, few simple tools that I use as a stunt coordinator 
Uh, number one, you know, the explosives. I, there's a lot I have to understand. Dew points, wind speed. Um, if I were to set the explosion up on the stage in this little green screen, I may have the visual supervisor say, hey, you gotta keep that explosion within this frame, because it's gonna mess us up. And that's how precise I've got to get setting off an explosion. If I were to make this room explode, all right, and I can do it in a way where it does not involve fire, but in a blink of an eye, I can fill with so much debris that you wouldn't be able to see. And those are what we, we have a small version of a can, and I got one about 10 times. I got four or five of those 10 times bigger than that one that I can load. We load cork, we load, we take cork, we may take a piece of metal bar that's made out of cork or styrofoam, painted silver, but throwing debris around the actors can't do it. You've heard the term squibs. Squibs are handled by pyrotechnicians and pyrotechnicians only. There are ways of making your own. You can use a, a yard sprayer that's plastic to pump the pressure in. You can hook a hose to put your blood inside the hose and then put a piece of makeup sponge to hold the, the blood in, put a little spot on your, and then run that hose underneath your clothes, somewhere releases the switch, blows the blood out. It's that, so those are the ones that put on actors. The ones that charge, I put on stunt guys. Stunt guys are dime a dozen. Um, I hurt one, there's 10 more standing there waiting to go to work. Um, <laughs> So it's a situation, you know, they, they're, you know, I, I call guys and, uh, uh, you know, they'll say, hey, you know, it, it, you're doing a squid today. Oh, can't wait. Um, usually on a SAG production, on a higher budget SAG film, that's anything over $700,000. Uh, we, we get $800 of squids. If you see a guy get shot three times and a squid is going off, he could be making about $2,500 for that one shot. Um, so I'm just going to give you some, you know, a lot of... There's a lot of questions about money. What's it cost to get a stunt coordinator? My go, my, and I'm just going to tell you, I mean, we're all sitting here, my going rate's $1,000 a day. That's just to get my lazy butt out of bed, get me on set, hand me my coffee, my donut, you owe me $1,000. All right, now if I'm rolling the Jeep, set myself on fire, then we start adding to that. Sometimes on an independent film, I may just say, we're fine, we'll just go with that daily rate, and that's that. I'm set. Um, I <coughs> went to Hollywood in 1989. I lived there 10 years and I learned the business. I learned the uh, special effects business from some of the best in the business. Um, I made, uh, made some good money at it, made some really good investments and uh, retired in Northern Michigan. I thought I was going to set up there and fish, but I uh, got a little bored. Uh, fishing's exciting. But from where I came from, ex motorcycle racer, I race cars now, I've done a whole deal, I had to do something. So I decided to return to the film business and teach, and I've been teaching for a while. So for me to speak in front of you is a very nerve wracking thing for me to do, but set me on fire off the top of the building and landing in an air bag, no sweat. Um, so uh, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to give you some demonstrations of what we do and how we do it. And uh, I think we will start with the um, fire burn first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a fire burn, and there's 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 protective gels out there that we use that protect the skin, and then we put the layers of clothing on, fireproof underwear. It depends on the shop. If a producer says, "Hey, Rick, I need you to burn five minutes nonstop," we'll get into world record status, and then my paycheck starts going up. Uh, for those of you who've ever seen the TV show uh, Millennium, uh, Chris Carter that did X Files, I was called in the first episode, did a fire burn for that for that TV show, and this is back years ago. I worked on Spencer for Hire. For those of you who remember Spencer for Hire, um, I was on that television show and uh, worked in Boston, also with the Warner Brothers. So I did, you know, fly and do some stunts, get out of there. Uh, made good money in commercials, nationally known commercials, Pepsi, Toyota, worked for Ford for a little while. And uh, the engineering side came out of Ford and, and uh, did that for a while and then decided that's enough. You know, so um, so that's, it's a very lucrative business. You gotta understand, you know, where to look for the job. Anybody know what a Mercury report is? Production Weekly. Yeah. Yeah, well, Mark knows. But anyway, <laughs> for those of you who don't know how to get work in the industry, 
The Mercury Report is a publication comes out, I think, twice a week or once a week of all the productions going on around the world. The same with Production Weekly. You know, people come to school, they learn how to, you know, learn how to do the job, but they don't know where to find the job. That's the hard part. For me, personally, most of you may know, but there are publications out there, SAG agents, they have, uh, they spend about $800 a month to get the breakdowns to tell them what's going on out in the film world. So if your agent is a SAG repertory agent and they're affiliated with SAG, then they're getting that information in order to give that to you, to send you somewhere to you fit that description of what they're looking for. So does anybody got an agent that's SAG affiliated in the room? Any SAG affiliated? Any? None. Uh, there are a few in the Detroit. There are a few in the Detroit area. I, I know some Teamsters, and they get the information pretty quick too. Yeah, Teamsters get it. Uh, actually, Teamsters get it before I. You know, we get it. Uh, we have breakdowns uh, through the SAG office. They kind of let us know what's going on, and sometimes. But you know what? I I'm kind of, I'm at this point in life where. You know, I retired, I'm kind of just doing things once in a while just to get my foot back into the water. Um, and there, there's plenty of stunt guys out there, there's plenty of actors out there. The thing that drives me absolutely nuts and is the fact that I'm an actor, I'm a stuntman. Really, I had a guy call me about two months ago from Chicago, an actor, you probably recognize his face if you see him, they asked me to set my feet on fire in a movie. I want you to tell me how to set my feet on fire. I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell you how to set your feet on fire because you can panic. Fire is very dangerous. So if I'm on fire from head to tail, front and back, how do I breathe? And what happens if I do breathe? My airway swells shut, I'm dead. By the time the squad gets there, life's over for real. You know, so fire will always move. So if I'm on fire, the front of me is on fire, the back of me is on fire, I walk forward, the fire is going behind me. I can breathe, I can stop, it wraps back around me. I can turn, I can do the same thing, or I can run. It pushes fire behind me, I can breathe. So you get somebody that sees himself on fire, and they can panic, and next thing you know, you got a dead body on your set because he claimed he could do a fire stunt. You better make sure you know who you're hiring when you bring them in. You know, so if you have questions, feel free to ask. I mean, you can contact me through, uh, you know, email or give me a call and say, hey, you know, I know this guy, I think he's good. Uh, just because this stunt guy has transformers or he has this or he has that, it may have been simple as just somebody running by pushed him against the wall and that's the stunt. That's it, it's over. You know, and, but to come in to do something complex, he may not have an idea, even though he's got the reputation, he's got that big credential, doesn't mean he's done anything that exotic. You know, I flip cars, you know, we figure out ramp speeds, I deal with uh, city engineers, I deal with the insurance companies that insure projects. I have to tell them, I'm blowing this up, here's my circle, camera can be here, people have to be here, and then the audience for the whole, the whole shoot has to be in this circle. So they know exactly what's going on. It could be a percussion where there's a lot of debris flying with the fire. Sometimes it's just visual. You know, we, we can do a, a, a fire flash and then add sound to it and that sounds like a big explosion. It's just a fire flash. It's something that, you know, you I hate to give a, you know, a little gasoline and, a, and some electric switches and a, a flash bulb won't take care of, you know, so I hate to give those signature rates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you um, we're going to start with the air cannon. What an air cannon does is just compressurize, it's just, it's air. And we compress, we compress it, we throw talcum powder, we can sift flour. You may have an actor that's allergic to flour. I got to find that out. And uh, we can't use that, so do I go to a talcum powder? You know, well, I'm allergic to baby powder. You know, where do we need to go in order to make our lead actress from breaking out? You know, so. Um, so we're going to start with that first, that way you can get an idea of what it is. And basically this is just an air compressor. And it, you, you pick up, I've got a valve on it, I can set the pressure of what I'm looking for. But it's going to blow a little debris in here. 
So afterwards, you want to help me clean this up? Not this best way, it's free. <laughs> so bear with me as I do this. Um, let's start with some questions while I'm doing this. I can listen. There, I know that guy. Go ahead. <clears throat> What's the highest paid stunt? The highest paid stunt? The highest paid. Um, as much money as you can get out of somebody. <laughs> what is it? Is it uh, falling out of the building, car crash? Is it falling out of the steps? Is it uh, fire? The bombing? highest I've ever been paid for a stunt's been fifteen thousand um, dollars. This is back in '85. I did a Pepsi commercial. I jumped a motorcycle from one seven-story building to another seven-story building. So that was a national commercial. I was in college. And it seemed like every time I went to the mailbox, I got another check. Residual star plan. I'm going, man, I just want to do commercials. That's it, you know. And uh, so it, it continued, and and, uh, and then one that led to another nationally known commercial. And uh, so those those piled up very quickly. Um, motion pictures, you know, using up on for uh, the one we seen the second the second tape there. Uh, I was on there 30 days, every day for 30 days. Thousand dollars a day. By the end of the month, I'm I'm grinning and I've gained a lot of weight. So I'm sitting in a lawn chair eating donuts until I hear my name and I go up and I bring what has to happen. A lot of times, actors will try and direct directors that are actors that are hard to work with. Um, you know, the Kevin Sorbo. You know, he, I took the movie. I've always wanted to work with Kevin because when he was on uh, Hercules, I was over in New Zealand on another project. And, uh, and I always wanted to get over and work with that group, and he was shooting in Hercules. Uh, the Hercules TV program was there for three years, I believe, and off and on for uh, for a solid three years. Then went then went to an eight year. So uh, so I always wanted to work with him. We finally met up on a picture, and um, so he's uh, probably one of the busiest guys in Hollywood. He's not the big ticket drawer, but he, he knows his business. So to try and direct him as an actor when he's directed. Very difficult thing to do. I had to yell at him a couple of times. So now let the director do his job. Mr. Talent guy, there you need to shut up. Uh, so, uh, me being the safety guy, yeah, I got to keep him safe and keep the crew safe, and uh, so that's what we run into. So I talk about fire stunts. There's been times I've gotten a script, I've looked at it, and went, "Wow, this is great. I like this. This is a great script. Very methodical. Very smart. Very okay." So I call. Well, we really don't have any money, you know. Do it, and sometimes I'll go do it. I'll just go do it, you know. And uh, and I'm also a five core. For those of you who know what that is, financial core. Anybody know what financial core is? All right, Mark Mars won't keep raising his hand at me, but anyways, <laughs> um, SAG is a union that we're supposed to work SAG films, and we're not supposed to do non-union. All right, and when I make SAG wages, it pays my home. And benefit and retirement. I came to Michigan, you know, eight years ago, and uh, I decided to go financial core, which means I can do non-union, non-union, but I don't pay into health and, 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 and benefits and things of that nature. I just get I'm eligible to work SAG, but I can also do non-union. And whether you choose to do that, really play the odds and think it through once you get your SAG card. You may want to think about that. You know, do I want to go financial core? Um, so that's, you know, SAG's not going to be happy with me even bringing that up here. Um, but it's a situation that, um, uh, you know, if you go to Hollywood, you want to get back into SAG full, uh, full steam to get the benefits and everything. You may not be able to get back in, you know, so that's, that's some of the differences. Um, the other thing, let's see, I'm trying to think just some of the things that we, we deal with. Is there questions back there? I have a question. Yeah. So when it comes to like a gunshot, like that movie Heat, how they shut down the whole city, they have the final shootout at the end. How do you make the uh, car look like it has bullet holes in it? Like you had one scene in that tr- in that uh, presentation where the tree looked like it got shot and it was a bullet hole. But like if I want to shoot a scene and I have my actors shooting up cars and everything, like right. that, how do I get cars to look like they're getting Shot Good question. Couple ways of doing that. Where's my vi- where's Jeremy? I'm sorry. Jeremy, you know how to do that in the visual office, correct? You can throw dents, stuff flying and, and post and 
I say, I always say this, fix it in post. But you can also do air. You know, airlines are coming up to it. You kind of peel the bark back a little bit. Maybe put a little bit of a pole in there, put a little air in there, and it blows that, that little piece of tree stump out. You know, it's all done with air, because I got an actor laying right there. So I don't want to be blowing black powder in his face. Uh, I can do that with the stunt guy laying there, I can care less. But, I mean, I do. I, I want to keep the stunt guy safe, and I want him there for the next movie. Uh, my crew follows, and, and if I heard him, I'm like, I don't know, I want to work with you again, because he took my finger off. Um, but it's, it's a situation where air, like if you get an old car, take a ball peen hammer, all right? Pop it with a little dent, with a little hole in it, right? And then you would take and you can put that same color over top of that and then either put a, a, an electrical charge or a little bit of air. So you got air lines coming off from a air compressor, uh, charging big fire extinguisher full of air, right? Different, you can split those air lines, get it to there to power that out away from the car. Uh, ping pong balls, you can cut those things in half, turn them. Cut them in half, put some air behind it, and it'll blow them ping pong balls and look like, make it look like metal. You paint them silver or black or whatever the color you want, and you blow it off the car and you use a ping pong ball. So like in air. Like with a window, like it would seem like a guy was driving in his car and he was sitting there reading the paper. A motorcycle uh, guy came and he was going to kill him. It seemed like a motorcycle the other day. <laughs> the window getting broken, how, how are you doing that? Like that can be done visual. That could be a visual pose. That could be done a pose. The window's down, shoot up and shoot him. He can, some of these, I don't know if he can do it, but some of these guys can draw in the glass and actually break the glass. You can also take high tempered glass, all right? High temper is what you use in your showers. You know, when those break, the motorcycle scene going through the gun store that we shot. I wanted smash glass. It's $1,800 a sheet, four by eight sheet coming from Hollywood. They can't even guarantee that if he got to Ohio where I was filming, so I said, you know what, go get me, go get me some uh, tempered glass. And so we set it up. We didn't have time to put strikers. Strikers are these devices. It's kind of like a mini cannon. You wire them to a switch, got a little black powder, that, that cannon pin comes out, strikes the glass, and then shatters it. That's how I would set your shot up if you're going to shoot into it. Now, if you got an actor sitting inside there, then we go to visual. We let him take care of it in post. He sets up the glass, and it's it's work. It's work. I talked to those guys, and they're like, "Can we just do this? You do it, so I don't have to spend eight hours trying to figure it out." You know, make it <coughs> make it's like fire nowadays. You know, you can add fire and, and, and visual. You can add fire, but you know what? I'll just do it. You know, it's cheaper for me to just go do it. I get paid well, and it takes a lot of pressure off from our visual guys when it gets into the post. So there's various ways, if you want to, did you get my card, get the card, contact me, kind of send me a scene description, yeah. how you want, you know, what you want, and then I'll, I'll verbally can tell you or show you or, and go there and out. There's several ways of doing it. If you got, like I said, an actor on the inside of the glass or shooting in, you got a problem. I don't want to hurt the actor. And you don't want to hurt him during that shot because if you're going to do that, you do that at the end of the movie, not in the beginning. <laughs> you hurt somebody and then you got to after we're living around and so we can't move but I'm already early. You know, um, I don't like actors doing their own stunts. They say, yeah, I do my own stunts. You know what? No, I don't want you doing your stunts because the insurance company does not want you doing your stunts because we're trained to take the beating, to get the tooth knocked out, get the swollen black eye, and black your eye and we're screwed for the rest of the shoot. That makes sense? Yeah. So there's several ways of doing the glass, you know, you can, you can take out the original glass of the car, put in some high tempered glass, and then take and, and then uh, either put a striker, you know, it's kind of like, you can almost take a firecracker and almost set it, but again, you're dealing with somebody on the inside of the glass. Now, you can superimpose or mat it or green screen it to where you can put the face of the actor there and then just act, there's the other shot, just shoot it. Use a real gun to shoot it. But you have to green screen and when i mean my green screen take a piece of styrofoam paint it green and then when i turn it over to visual he can draw in the actor's face you know and you can actually blow that glass clear out of there if you take it somewhere out you know and do chop chop you know what i'm saying chop it all together put a green screen in behind there and they put the actor's face in okay, one more box yeah time. so like i, I saw him hold up like an 
like uh, yep. So I'm assuming there's no real guns being used, period, even for like visual. Those things. are real guns. Smith and Wesson donated every gun we had on set. And but I do not want bullets on my set, period. Insurance does not want bullets on the set. If I see one on set, I'm usually gonna I'm gonna grab you by the hair head and throw you off set. I do not want live ammunition on my whether it's a blank, I don't want it on there because visual effects can fix that. Visual effects can do the flash. And that all can be done right there. That was all done by visual effects. All I, of them. Uh, I shot a couple music videos in Detroit and they always bring their real gun. Right. And uh, you know, I always tell them like, you know, no bullets or whatever. So right. I mean, shot. <laughs> and uh, but just saying you do you, like it, it's so because I was a little nervous, like, can we even have these guns out? You feel what I'm saying? Like, what if the police come? And they see a bunch of people standing around with guns. I always act. I ask for forgiveness if I get caught sometimes doing that. You know, um, it's. I have traveled through small towns with explosives, 13 guns behind the, you know, in the back of my truck. And if I run a stop sign, and get pulled over, I'm probably going to be very late for the production. You know, because I'm going to be in jail. You know, but. Um, I so I always, I always, I always go up to the police officers that I see if I'm close to that area. Hey, we're shooting a video, we're shooting a movie, we're doing this. I'm um, introducing myself. We have a gun. Here's what we're doing. You know, and, and tell them. A lot of times they're cool. They want to come over and check it out. Yeah. You know, they want to see what's going on. You know, so and that and that's okay. You know, but make sure don't try and hide it. The more you hide it, then it's going to be pain in the butt to try to get out of. It. So ask, you know, just announce yourself. Here's what we're doing. Um, for those of you who know what that is, that's called uh, shotgun filming. You run to a location, you shoot it, and you run. You go to the next set. You know, we don't have permission, but we shot it there. I've done a lot of those. Um, so it's, it's and, and some of those films, that we used, back in the 80s, we used to rent cars at LAX. I told them, we dropped them off, I dropped the keys off the box, <laughs> And the car is destroyed, but they got the insurance. The movie producer got the insurance on the car. So nine bucks for the day, and here I tore it all to pieces. We dropped it on <laughs> things smoking, you know. Now that's a felony. They caught on, you know. So I'm out there running 100 mile an hour, locking up the e-brake, going and spinning the thing, and the you know the chop top, the chocks are ripping, <coughs> and the tires are all flat, flat spotted from skidding so much. And then we just say, oh, we're done. We do it at night, drop box, we drop it off. We're done with that car, you know. And then what happened at that point, because it wasn't in my name, I just drove. You know, that's what I was hired to do. So that's that. I shouldn't be giving you those kind of ideas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a felony charge nowadays to do that. Um, but there, there's ways of getting around that. And feel free to, you know, get my card and feel free to send me an email. I'm in Michigan. And uh, feel free to send me an email, and I'll, I'll try to explain based off the scene description that you send me. All right? Because there's several ways of doing it. There's safe ways of doing it. There's other ways where if you don't have a visual guy to visual effects to take care of that, you know, there's matting. There's, you know, the green screening. That, that all can be fixed. Again, fix it in post. I don't care. You know, so because I know it can be fixed. You know, so my visual effects guy's like on the phone, hey, no, this ain't working. You know, so. Well, we do it. We're going to fix it, you know. So, and, yes. Observation and a question. Observation it is always easier to ask forgiveness than it is permission. Very good. Yes. And uh, <laughs> the question is: Now you're I'm looking about five eleven, six feet tall. Six one. Six one. Okay. How do you deal with having to double somebody that's six five, six six? Do they, they give you lift shoes or they just change the angle or, or how do you become somebody that really doesn't look like you or inverse, you don't really look like him, how do you become that person for just those few seconds that you're needed? Kevin Sorbo 6'4", I'm 6'1", alright? If you notice in some of that when we're up close, long shots, I can't tell somebody from this tall from this stall, from a long shot, not a big deal. Getting up close, camera starts moving underneath. We're up here looking down, side to side, straight on. No, because now you're, you're just, wait a minute, that don't look that, he just grew like two inches, but if the camera's down here, it's hard to pick that up. 
camera's up here looking down, it's hard to pick that up. But if this camera's right here, then we got a problem. You know, they, they blink of an eye, continuity changes because, well, how did it just shrink two inches? You know, now, as people looking at that, you bet there is. The, the, the sophisticated action audience picks that stuff up. You know, I said, hey, you know, continuity, I, I call them continuity fish. They're just swimming everywhere. Hey, you know, the button was done, but then next thing it wasn't. You know, the hair was length to the left, now it's to the right, you know, and you've all seen that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's some of it. A lot of my fights, I remember we had a guy that was 6'6", and I brought in a, not knowing this guy's height, I seen his face, the, the director, producer, sends me a picture and says, give me a stunt double. Okay. My actor's this tall, my stunt guy comes in, he's this tall. <laughs> and we got close-ups in a bedroom, about a 14 by 12 bedroom, and a big fight scene breaks out. Big fight. My martial arts guy, Joe Cross, he came in. Yeah, and, yeah you, you know Joe. Anyway, he came, Joe's not a big guy, but 5'10", I think. And uh, so anyway, so director's like, well, we had a two camera guys, A and B. B wanted in there, I kicked B out. You cannot be in here while all this is going on. Get out of here. It hurt his feelings, but that's that. So I went to the producer, overrode the director, and said, this is not gonna work, this is gonna look terrible. And I, he said, then you direct it, set the director down. You know, then you take over and, and coordinate. And that's what he did. So that's what we run into a lot. Um, as far as, you know, me being on fire, or me coming out of an explosion, you can't tell if there's a foot added to me or I'm a you know, foot less than the, the actor I'm double. You know, you just aren't gonna tell those, but the close-up shots, shooting conversations, Mark probably knows this, but shooting a conversation between two actors, you never really wanna show, like, you know, like, here I am, here's the actor, right, or the other actor, and dialogue's going like, you never wanna show this or this. You want to show from this shoulder to that shoulder, or from this shoulder to that shoulder. So we want to do a cross filming like that in order to do it. Because it just looks bad. You know, it just looks bad to see the flat not, in, you know, it's, it's not in 3D. It's not, you don't see the depth there. You just see a flat conversation that's going, but you need to cut from shoulder to shoulder. So those are the things that, you know, I will look for in the script. I read scripts where a scene transition. You know, it's like, what has this got to do with the movie? You know, why are we blowing this up? It has nothing to do with the movie. It looks cool, I'm gonna get paid, I'm happy, you know, but I've actually said, why are we doing this? Why they well, it looks great, Rick. Well, it has nothing to do with the story. Take it out. Or why don't we do this? I uh, just shot one last summer. I blew up an airplane for a film, and uh, I asked the director, how does the pilot die? There's a, there's a pilot, and two actors, or two people, in it, and that's it. That was all within the movie. He said, well, you know, the plane crash kills the pilot. I said, let's set him on fire, and he comes to fiery death, and that opens up the movie. Okay, you know, the, the company that made that camera was in Miami, wanted to know how we did that. You know, the explosions, and, and they thought, first they thought it was done visual effects, we actually did it, and then they realized it was done. You know, we decided to do that. That was my eight days down there, we're just sitting there waiting to do the, the explosion, which took place in the last three hours of the shoot. And I sit there for seven days eating donuts and drinking coffee, but anyways. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, real quick, I, I just wanted to bring up a story related to the shooting gun stuff. Like, I think within the last nine months or in last year, there were some people in Detroit simulating breaking into a car as part of a music video and the police shot at them. So, I, but no one got actually shot, but they're, you know, it, it, it wasn't. I have to look that story up, but I remember it in the news somewhere. Announce the, yourself. I'm but, just saying announce yourself. The you know, let me know. Yeah, the question that I had for for you, if you don't, was that. Yeah, go ahead. I remember something like, under learning that back in the, you know, early days of cinema, 30s, 20s, 30s, 50s, whatever, uh, you know, early early American cinema that being a stunt person was, could be very fatal, actually. Pretty, and pretty it still fatal. can be. Is it still, I mean, has anything changed? I mean, it's obviously the awareness or the, like, changed over the last, I don't know, 50 years or whatever? 
<laughs> no, no. I back in 1996, a, a friend of mine called. Her name was Sonia Davis, and she's 26 years old, and um, she worked on Vampire in Brooklyn with Eddie Murphy. And it was a situation. She called me and said, "Rick, I'm doing a high fall out of a window tomorrow. Please come and watch." You know, and I said, "Okay, great. I'd love to be there." So we went. I'm probably from here to the window uh, from the actual stunt, but I'm I'm not part of that set. I'm just there to watch my friend do a five-story fall into sure. an airbag. So we get there, and I notice there is a brick wall uh, for a car, just wide enough to get the car through between the brick wall and the building that she was jumping from. So they made the uh, decision to turn the airbag. All right, airbags have a set design, and there's a reason for that. I'm not going to get into it tonight, but they turned the airbag. She has three, I can hear, everything fine, everything fine, stunt corner is like, yes. You know, we're ready, set, let's go, let's do this. She comes out, doesn't fall. Um, she goes in behind the wall, because I can't see her, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and all of a sudden I hear a medic, people running that direction, and she died. So it was a situation. Um, the next television show that I work on, uh, LA Heat. Uh, for whatever reason, that television show, there was a lot of injuries and a couple of deaths. I did a fall, uh, all from a ladder. I was playing a firefighter, and I'm up on a 12 foot ladder, and this, this beam comes down, you know, <coughs> the fire hits me in the chest, knocks me off the ladder onto my back. The director's like, Rick, can you do that one shot without a pad? And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, so more money and I'll do it, you know. So they gave me, they agreed upon it, didn't argue a bit about it. So I put a gator back on, for those of you know what that are, that's something that you wear on your on your spine uh, that motorcycle racers use and it protects you from you falling on your back. I come off, I over rotate, come high on my shoulder blades, kind of knocked me out a little bit, but I got up. I've I, I seen stars for a good hour after the stunt and uh, a couple months later, I'm going uh, to a restaurant in Simi Valley and um, pass out, you know, and it got to the point I couldn't sleep. So about a year and a half later, I go to the doctor. He said, buddy, when did you break your neck? Oh, and I'm like, uh, you know, so wow. uh, they ran pit pins and plates and cadaver bone and the whole deal in there. So it was my stupidity being a young guy that was anxious to prove that I could do this, and I did. Yeah, no, so um, wow. I believe Larry Lerner might have been on that on that okay. shot. I can't remember, maybe, uh, but anyways. He's um, much more careful now. <laughs> well, I just, yeah, I just done some stuff, you know, a while back. Sometimes I'll get a crew in and they're all gone, they're drawing straws. I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. I'll do it if you want me to do it. Just like, you know what, I'll just do it, you know. And usually I'll go do it, you know. So uh, the scene where I come out of the truck, and that was shot in Troy, Michigan. Uh, MPI, for those of you that I, I don't mean to bring up competition, but um, the shot called for the truck to explode and I'm coming out on fire. All right, so we explode the truck, I go to get out, the floorboard of the truck collapses. My foot goes clear through the floorboard, now I'm stuck. I'm on fire and the truck's on fire and I can't get my foot out. I kept my wits and I said, you know what, I want to die right here. This is the end of me, this is it, I'm dead. You know, so all and so I'm trying to point, stay calm, and I got the foot out, did my little death roll scene, and it was over with. But it scared me to death. I come close to missing their bag myself, you know, and live shows. Uh, but LAD, the next guy that got killed, uh, had to do a fall in a warehouse five stories up, and uh, there was a guardrail, and then they put an apple crate. You know, so he could run, step on the apple crate, go over the rail, and land on the airbag. Well, why he, I wasn't there, I didn't see it, but why he chose to put his weight onto an apple crate when he stepped on the apple crate to kick back. So he fell between the airbag and the, the, the rail, you know, and hit, hit it from five stories up on the concrete. And uh, so that's, you know, all he had to do was secure the apple box. Just drop it down, nail it, glue it, whatever you got to do. That's where, and that way it doesn't kick back. 
It is we get young, we're young, some of us are a little stupid back then, I might still be, but uh, uh, so it's a situation where be smart when you're filming. Understand what the lights and, and, and ask. If you're not sure, ask. You're going to have people say, oh, you know, it's, everything's fine, don't worry about it. Um, I've seen a girl get into a sword fight scene. She was 110 pounds, he was 240 pounds. He was a martial arts expert. He brought in, they hired this guy, he was an expert, brought him in, said, I'm the best there ever will be, and she gets off her marks. He draws back, comes down, cut her thumb off. And they reattach it, thank goodness. But she owned that movie from that moment on. You know, that was, oh, you got an expert? I don't care. You know, so martial artists, there's some good ones out there. They know angles, they know how to throw punches, they know how to do things. Those I like, you know, they do some complicated stuff. I like to see that. But at the same time, I've seen martial artists come in this, never worked in front of a camera before. And, um, and the movement's so fast, I gotta slow them down. You know, and it looks cool. You know, it looks great. I, I like the movement. I like what's going on. But I tell you what, I can take two dancers, one, two, three, cut, one, two, three, cut, one, two. I can take two female dancers and let them beat the daylights out of them because they know music and they hear the tempo. The tempo. You know, and sometimes when I'm coordinating, one, two, three, cut, one, two, three, cut, and they'll start moving. And I'll work out a routine with them, and I, I, I've, I've taken martial arts experts swim together, and I actually had a contest with the director, because he was a martial arts expert, and they do a scene together, and then my two girls came together, neither one of them never fought, but they had leather jackets on, leather pants, long hair, they're biting, scratching, throwing punches, smacking off the leather, leather, and then we watched it in post on dailies, it looked great, you know, and I'm like, it's, it, sometimes it can be that simple. Don't get me wrong, martial arts are, very good when they're trained properly. They know camera angles. They know camera angles. I got a guy I want to work with. If he doesn't know, I'm going to come or she, then I'm going to show him. Hey, I'm moving the camera over here. What do you want to do? I'm going to move the camera over here. What do you want to do? And they, they will adapt to that camera movement. Even when we're rolling, they may something may go astray. Something might get off step. You know, but they'll recoup from that real quick. They'll keep right on fighting until they hear the word cut. So it's like it's like the Yes. Yeah, that's what they did with uh, Matt Damon. Yes. Yeah. Lauren yeah. Kennedy made him look like. Right, right. You know, so some of these guys. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some actors out there. Uh, you know, the Tom Cruise. I mean, yeah, they take him to another country and he, he gets away with it. If he was here in the states, probably be doing stunts, insurance for a while. So he goes over there and does. Uh, there are some actors out there that are martial artists. You know, so we know the Jackie Chans and we know the those guys, they, you know, but when he came to the States, he couldn't do it either because the insurance wouldn't let him do it. You know, so, but he would, he would try, you know, but he knew it as second nature. So anyways, um, any more before I start this? Let me do this real quick and then we'll get out of here. Just a quick one. Does your area of responsibility strictly go with the stunts or more the safety of the whole production? all of the lady that was killed on the train crossing uh, because people weren't paying attention. If, Sarah, a stunt, if, Sarah, a, yeah. if a stunt coordinator was there, um, it would, first it would be the first AD. I don't know if that was union or non-union, I don't know, but the first AD is in charge of safety, period. If I come on board as a stunt coordinator, I talk to my first AD, Rick, what are you doing today? And I said, do you understand what I'm doing? Not really. Then you push aside. I will take, I've been called by SAG on numerous occasions just to go to the movie and work with a PA to watch because they wouldn't give them permission to shoot that SAG film because they didn't have somebody there that was trained enough in safety. You know, so safety's a big, you know, nobody's life is worth a motion picture. I don't care how much money is into it. No life is worth, if you feel you're in a position where your safety's threatened, then stop. You know, as an actor, stop, ask questions, find out, get comfortable with it. You, I've seen this happen. We take, we take a, an older actor, this age, you know, 75 years old, they want him to throw a punch and fall down. Well, I'm going to go to him and say, can you do that? Well, not really, and I just, I just can't because I've had hip replacement, I've done, then you know what, we're done. We need to find somebody to stunt. They want to save paying a stunt double for that actor. 
You know, so my job as a coordinator is to say, not gonna happen. Now, sometimes I'll put a pad down and say, hey, you know, you can do it once, because they get a little nervous, because they don't know what it's gonna feel like, but I'll try and pad them and get it to where we can pull them off, or we change the position of the cameras, do a thing a little different. <coughs> you know, sometimes we just wanna see his head hit the floor, but then set him up on his butt, lay him on his back of his legs, and then just lay his back, and just get from here up. Simple shot, you know. Why do we have to see the whole body fall? We just want to see his head hit the ground. That's all we want. So I sit down, set him down on the ground, on his butt, and then he just kind of lays straight back, acts, sells the punch or sells the hit, and it's over. It was that, it's just simple shots like that that, for some reason, new directors are like, well, let's just have him fall straight backwards. No, 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 we can't, you know. So, but anyways, let me set this up, show you a couple of demonstrations, and then. Am I out of time? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, if I reach in the back back there, uh, I apologize. <laughs> what I'm doing is just putting uh, cotton balls and a little bit of scrunchies that I took out of my bathroom. They're a little smelly, but you know, <laughs> they get I apologize. No, we're okay. I have a gauge that I can see how much pressure I'm putting into this tank. Um, we use tanks a lot for compressed air, for ratchets. There's devices that would jerk stump performers backwards. I could jerk somebody through a wall. There's devices made just for that purpose. Decelerators, these are things that are about this wide. They're on a, there's cables on those spools, and then there's like a big fan blade that keeps tension on the wire as the stunt guy's jumping off the building. So it's a high speed. Elevator ride, you know, so right before they hit the ground, I can stop them within five or six feet of the, of the ground. You know, so the, the technology is changing every week, it seems like. This new technology comes. Some of the old guys will contact me from LA and say, hey, I got this stuff going on. I'm not quite sure how to do it. Explain to me what they're doing. You know, and then I'll, as the engineer side comes out, kind of explain how this works. But, anyways, let me get this done. This is what we call an air cannon. An air cannon I can take, and if this was a window ledge, I can point this that direction, all right? So here's the window ledge. I want to blow an explosion out of the window. Oh. Instead of messing up the inside of a building, I put the fire at the window ledge on the floor, point this back out, and then the flame comes up, I throw this, and this pushes the flame out the window. So there's nothing really projecting out. There's no glass line, there's, that's all done visually. You know, the post guys take care of that and the debris of glass and stuff going is uh, uh, something they will take care of to add to that. I can put styrofoam, I can put cork, I can paint it. Uh, if it's a shot where no actors, nobody's around, I can throw nails and stuff in there and get that shot. You know, you can come back and add your actors maybe later. There are several ways of shooting things. What would happen? You gotta get these things locked down because if you put so much pressure in, the thing can actually take off. But in this particular mode, we're just not gonna do that because I got my hands on it. So if I get jerked off the stage, you'll know why. Um, so anyway, so three, two, one. So what I would do with a stunt guy, I would put him, point this down, right? And I'll get him on a trampoline in front of that. He's just running, gets the trampoline. I blow this with fire, and it looks like he's coming out of an explosion. I throw a lot of debris in these things. This is a small one. So we got him this big around with a tank that's as big as I am and bigger. You know, so that's so much pressure involved in the of blow stuff clear across this room. So if I put one in each corner, again, blink of an eye, this room disappears. And that's that's how we do that. The other thing I want to show you is fire. Um, 
we get this out of the way. So I'll cut the ball on the corner. This is just a cotton sock. This is not fireproof underwear. I have all that stuff. I've got many, many layers of fireproof underwear. I want to show you any fire stuff that's going on, you want to use natural fibers, wool, cotton. Polyester melts, gases are given off, and that can hurt you. Good choice, it's going to stick to your skin if you're on fire. So you got to use cotton or you got to use uh, our wool. It doesn't melt. In a char, it may catch on fire a little bit, but it won't, it won't uh, melt like a polyester or anything of that nature. So what we're going to do, let me get right here. Show this real quick and get this going. This is a fire protective gel. There are gels you can buy at Hollywood, special effects shops in Hollywood. Uh, New York, there's a company that sells it out there. It's about $100 a gallon. If I do a full burn, I use about three gallons. Um, I make my own. You know, as an engineer, I kind of put two and two together and figured out what works, what doesn't work. This has kept me alive for the last 20 years. You know, very simple ingredients. But it's just, you know, uh, it's just something that I feel safe with. Um, I don't sell it. Uh, if guys ask for it, I won't. I just won't ship it to them. Now, I, know, I did ship it to one buddy in LA, and, and he's like, okay. You know, so, um, so I, I don't advise you to do this, but if you've had experience doing it, uh, it can hurt you. Prime example, in New York, back in 1998, man comes up on stage at a fireman's convention, sets himself on fire because he's a pro that he is, stands there, and they went to put him out, can't get him out. Why? Because he didn't pull the pins on the fire extinguisher. So they're trying to get the fire extinguishers open. Pins had been pulled. So the guy basically about died. You know what I mean by pins in the fire extinguisher? You got to pull pins out for the handle to work. So they did not pull the pins out, and that's basically the guy just about burned to death before, before he, he was out. So um, I trained firefighters. I went to Upper State New York. Here in Michigan, I've trained. I've been down to Alabama, and we've shot uh, 30 <coughs> homes where I come out on fire to see how firefighters react to seeing a guy on fire. Why would you train that? The reason you would train that is people in meth homes will hang get, get bags of gasoline in the basement, and if the police come in, they set the place on fire by hanging bags of gasoline to get rid of the evidence. So some of these firefighters go into that and they can have fire all over. So it's a situation, we wanted to see how they would react with a guy coming out of a house completely on fire. They will approach it, they'll go through it, they've got the equipment to do that, but to have it all over them, how will they react? You know, and thank goodness they all reacted the way they were trained. And a couple of them kind of freak out a little bit, I heard a few choice words, but we got it done and that was that. But anyways, um, let me get this done. As you can see, I get pumped up for this. I, every time I do it, I just, every fire burn is different. And there's times when it reacts the way I know it's going to react. There's other times it reacts the way I don't know what it's doing. And so it's, it's, it's I just can't panic, you know, so. Here we go, let me get to this. Normally this will go on the skin, but since I have to go home tonight and all that fun stuff, then, uh, I'm just going to put it on the cotton. I usually go on the skin, but I don't know. this is rubber cement. Same thing you buy off the uh, grocery shelf at a <coughs> local grocery store, school supply. Um, Hopefully we don't set the alarm off, and I'll be begging for forgiveness. There's, a, there's an exit to the outside right there. <laughs> and there's just a partial burn. Imagine both arms on fire, chest on fire, back on fire, head on fire. It gets, and I usually mix a little gasoline in the way. 
So when it goes, it goes quick and there's a lot of heat. So as you can see, okay, enough of that. <laughs> Before we set the alarm up. Skin. I can mix makeup in with that, with that gel, and as I burn, that gel is dripping off, so it's like skin stripping. So that's to be used in a horror film or whatever you want to use it in, but it protects the skin. It gives you some time. It'll hold up for, just depends on how cold it is outside or how I get it cold. I may put it, in a, you know, get it as cold as I can get it. There's been times on movie sets or TV shows I've gotten dressed in an ice truck. They brought an ice truck to the film set, full ice. I get in there and I prep. I get all the stuff on because I don't want I don't want to be sweating because that's what burns is the sweat, you know. So I get a steam burn and it's painful. So I want to come out cold. I'm praying for heat when I do some fire stuff. So please send me on fire. I'm freezing to death. My hair's got gel in it. It's freezing. And they set me on fire and it's like thank you, you know. And then I got some time, you know. So uh, the longest I burned. And during testing, it's been over five minutes. Right now, that's a world record. I just, why do you need a world record on a movie? Why do you need to set it, take the chance of getting yourself hurt? You know, somebody asked me, by all means, I'll do it. You know, but paychecks have to be pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, there are things going on that, uh, you know, we're, I, I think in 90s, I remember going to Las Vegas and there was a lot of visual stuff coming out. I watched John. John Wayne climb a Eiffel Tower, come back down. I couldn't tell the difference. It was that good, you know, at that time. And now it's like, why don't we just do that? Wouldn't it be cheaper for me to just, climb? which I'm climb, I'm just too old and can't do it. But uh, there are guys who could probably climb and have no problem doing that. It's cheaper to do that than have visual do it, you know. So um, that's some of the things we get into. We got we got to weigh the odds. How can I save your independent production money? Airbag. I've, pro I've got one in the house. Um, I can do high falls on fire into it up to about 60 feet. Um, but people don't realize you can take cardboard boxes and stack them up and have a guy come two or three swords into the cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, but the trick is how much does he weigh? The guy going into the boxes. Number two, how thick are the boxes? So there's formulas. Me as a stunt coordinator and engineer <laughs> is static compression. I don't know if you've heard of that term. Is the amount of pressure, if you take a piece of paper and you wad it up, there's a little resistance there because of the paper. Same thing with a high fall going into a cardboard boxes. There's a resistance to those boxes. I better know, I don't want to, if I go three layers high, I don't want him to stop at four layers. You know, he went through the first three and now he's on the ground. You know, so I better know he's going to hit the first two layers and get stopped at the first three, however the shot's called for the thickness wow. of the boxes. So there's a lot of little tricks like that that you as an independent filmmaker, you can figure that out. Jerking some guy through a wall that's getting shot in the chest. You know, it's a situation that you can run through a cable, run it over to a ladder, have two guys on the ladder that's about five or six steps up. They hold the key handle, you run it down to the actor, whoever went blow through the wall, and they jump off the ladder and they jerk the guy backwards. That's a simple way, easy way of doing it. You know, you can do that with ropes and then take it out visually. So, so anyways, um, any more questions? I think we're are we done on time. Probably well over time. Right? Yeah, we're, we're just about out of time. Okay, let's thank Rick really quick. Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, cards are out on the table. If you have questions pertaining to an actor, actress, you know, <coughs> questions about safety. You know, send me an email, shoot me, I may not get up right then and there, but shoot me an email, ask a question, and I'll tell you. Uh, special effects as well. Directors, do not think you know everything when it comes to directing your movie. If you bring somebody in like me, you better understand what he's doing, or you hired me and know he knows what he's doing, you may not have to worry, but in some cases you may have to worry, so you better do some homework and research 
as a director or producer. So whether you're doing music, I've done music videos. Um, Aerosmith, I did Aerosmith many years ago. And um, so it's just, you know, I didn't already do it. I never dealt with stunts, but it turned out really good. You know, so it's a situation you just gotta be careful of um, where you're working with, who you're working with, ask questions. Don't ask them anything to slow everything down, but just get the important stuff out that you need to ask. So you're safe. You know, not when we're gonna eat next. You know, well, if they're gonna blow this up, where should I be standing? You know, so yeah, well yeah, standing up against a building that we're blowing the windows out of. You know. well, anyway, so thank you for your patience. Um, again, if you have questions to ask. Uh, I'm new to this area. I live hour south of Mackinac Bridge. So uh, we're actually in December throwing a guy through ice up there. Cool. I got a stunt guy crashing through ice and then I gotta make sure he doesn't drown. And you know? so uh, as a stunt coordinator, I, get him, I gotta get him out. You know, so we've got, and it involves kids. Um, the kids are nine years old. My stunt guy is 180 pounds. So long shot is a stunt guy going in Short shot is the kid close to the hole, or we put him on a table, put the snow on the table. See where we're going with this? It's not in the tank, though? No, it's, it's an actual lake. We're actually, but the thing of yeah. it is, we can cheat it. We're still looking at the middle of the lake. Yeah. We got the edge, we throw snow everywhere. We cut a hole in the ice, and we take a piece of white styrofoam. Yeah, sure. We put that over the hole, and we put some snow on top of that because it's going to hold the snow up. So that guy walks up, falls into the ice, goes on there. You know, so I wait, I, you know, I've, I've got him now, to make sure it's safe, I've got him leased. Okay. He's hooked to a cable, I've got him, you know, to a leash to where I can, for the problem, I can pull him out of there. Okay. You know, so that's, and it's still getting underwater um, people to come in, which is very pricey to get guys with cameras to come in and people get underneath the water. A lot of times we just do it, you know, I just have to stop back up through it. She calls them very minimal, so they'll hire an old dive team to do it. And I'm sorry I didn't mean to put you out of business there, but uh, a dive team wants an ungodly amount of money for a four man team to come in to make sure one guy's safe. So, me as a stunt coordinator, it's my job to make sure he stays safe. If he's comfortable going under. If he doesn't come out, I set a time limit, and then I take off running with the cable and I get him out of there. And that's kind of how that gets set up. Yeah, so, anyways, so that's that. Thank you for your. Folks, well, so I just wanted to let you guys know uh, we do have our next big event coming up, the Schoolcraft Film Challenge. We only have a few teams registered so far. So that's our next big fun event. You can make a film in a weekend. Um, it takes place on November 9th. Screening is on November 11th. We're going to meet in here, watch all the films at 7 p.m. on Sunday night. So if you want to come out and hang out, um, it's a, a lot of fun. And you can learn so much making a film in a weekend. It's a lot of fun. And so... I recommend everybody try that out. Go to our Facebook page, Schoolcraft Film Challenge. You can register for the Schoolcraft Film Challenge. There's flyers out in the hallway. And again, the, the moral of bad luck bananas and so on, trust your experts. You know, Don't go out there trying to blow up stuff and go under the lake and do all this stuff unless you have the training and you know learn how to use this equipment before you do it. Um, so have a good night and hopefully we see you in November. Thanks for coming. Thank you.